Welcome to the Sharkpreneur Podcast with Kevin Harrington and Seth Green. Kevin Harrington is the inventor of the infomercial, one of the original sharks from the hit TV show Shark Tank, and has generated over $5 billion in TV and digital direct response sales. Seth Green is the world's first trusted authority on cutting edge direct response marketing, a best selling author, and the only three time Marketer of the Year nominee. On the podcast, Kevin and Seth interview sharkpreneurs who share straight talk on what it takes to explode your business. Why do so many businesses struggle while others seem to explode overnight? Do you wish you had the secret to this type of exponential growth? Now, I've scaled more than 20 businesses to over $100 million, and it's not just luck. In my new book with Mark Tim, Mentor to Millions, you'll learn the repeatable framework I use in all my business ventures for massive success. Order at KevinMentor.com and get over $1,000 in bonuses. Head to KevinMentor.com. Welcome to the Sharkpreneur Podcast. This is your co-host, Seth Green. With me, as always, is the inventor of the infomercial and the original shark on the hit TV show Shark Tank, Kevin Harrington. Kevin, thanks for being here. Great to be here. I'm happy. We've got a great guest. Uh, let's let's do it. Let's have some fun today. Awesome. I am super excited. We're interviewing Ravi Abuvala, the founder of Scaling with Systems, a business accelerator, which works to systemize and scale their clients' businesses, leveraging elimination, automation, and overseas assistance. In the last 14 months, he's created two seven-figure businesses with less than 10 employees. I got too many, I guess. And has helped 143 entrepreneurs scale to six, seven, and eight figures. He's spoken on some of the largest stages in the industry and has been featured on Fox News, Entrepreneur, and Forbes. Robbie, thanks so much for joining us. Seth, Kevin, thank you guys so much for having me on here. I'm super stoked to do this. Let's go back in time a little bit. How did you get started? Uh, awesome question. It's an interesting story, and I'll try to keep it brief here, but I was always wanted to be a lawyer. That was the whole goal. Like Law was going to be where I kind of took this route, and I watched every episode of Law and & Order and Suits that there was out there, so I thought that I knew what it was like to be a lawyer. And um, when I graduated college, I decided to take a year off to study for law school, right? There's something called the law school admission test. LSAT, and yes. LSAT, exactly. So you know exactly what I'm talking about. And if you really take law school seriously, you need a really great law, uh, LSAT score. And I wanted to go to one of the top schools in the nation. So I took a year off. Uh, I, took, uh, I graduated and decided to take a year off. Within three days, I got a call from my dad who lived in Atlanta, Georgia at the time. And he was diagnosed with uh, stage four lung cancer. And he was living by himself and he had to do chemo and radiation five days a week. And so I ended up because they wouldn't let him because of the iodine, they wouldn't let him drive. So I ended up driving, uh, dropping everything I was doing, moving in with him, you know, and that's exactly what you want to do when you graduate college is move right back in with your parents, right? So <laughs> moved back in with my dad. And uh, for about a year, I did chemo and radiation treatments with him five days a week while I was studying for law school. Long story short, ended up uh, near the end of that, I just like... I was talking to all these 30 year olds um, who kind of thought that they had more time in their life than what now their new reality showed them. And I just realized that the whole reason I want to be a lawyer was so that I could eventually run my own business. And I was just like, you know what, why am I being a lawyer to run a business? Why not just start running a business? So uh, I ended up taking the test because I'd spent about a year, a year and arguably 18 years preparing for it. I scored in the top 10% of test takers, uh, got into all my dream schools, but I remember I came downstairs and told my dad, I'm, yeah, I'm not going to go to law school. And uh, instead, I Googled how to make money online, and I got a job at an Italian restaurant around the corner. <laughs> all right. Well, <laughs> hey, so a crazy t story and how things happen, and God bless. Sorry to hear about um, all of the... The, the, the tough things in, in the story there. And so question going forward, what was your first like big deal? How did you learn? I mean, did you scale for yourself or did you scale for somebody else first? Yeah, that's an awesome question. So what I originally did was I, I found out how to make money online. I joined a few programs. I learned the power of advertising and lead generation. And um, so my first real deal was actually my first biggest mistake in business was like, I didn't tell anybody I was in business because I was so afraid that if someone saw that I was an entrepreneur, they'd be like, but I thought you were a lawyer. And also I didn't want to fail. And then everyone would know that I had failed. So essentially I uh, was at dinner with my girlfriend at the time's parents and he was a plastic surgeon and he had said, uh, you know, I need someone to help run my social media talking to his daughter, my girlfriend. And she's like, do you know anyone? And I was like, well, I, I do that. 
And he was like, oh, you do? And I, she was like, oh, you do? Because nobody had known that I'm like secretly living this entrepreneur double life. And it ends up, I signed him. I remember I, his hands were so sweaty, like signing up as a client of mine. Uh, and he became my first ever client. And uh, that, so I first started building other people's business. And as far as my advertising agency was concerned, uh, generating them leads using online advertising platforms like Facebook and Google and YouTube and sales funnels in order to do it for like local businesses like lawyers, doctors, dentists, real estate agents. And then how did that turn into the short version of how did that turn into scaling with systems? Yeah, uh, essentially after I had kind of mastered that, I started hiring people uh, like virtual assistants overseas. I couldn't afford to hire like, you know, 50, 60, 70, 80,000 a year with payroll and taxes and all that stuff in the US. So I, I stumbled upon virtual assistants. I essentially um, hired a few. I had them just focus on lead generation for me. And it was like oh, one month we were doing $1,000 a month. The next month we were doing $11,000 a month. Then we did $33,000 a month. Then we did $50,000 a month. And it was just like uh, piling high. I ended up just started traveling the world. I outsourced it all to my virtual assistants. I lived in South America. I lived in Europe. And then during this whole process, my friends that had started this journey at the same time as I did were like, how did you do this? And uh, I was just like, oh, well, it really had to do with this, this, and this. And I uh, kind of started showing them that and then they brought other people to me and that kind of snowballed into the scaling with systems that I have today. Robbie, do you have like a specific like niche that you focus on or, you know, you know you've heard about some of the clients just trying to understand the expertise that you've developed? Yeah. So for scaling with systems, the main thing that we focus on, this is where we're helping people scale to multi seven figures online specifically is pretty much business to business. That's really our, our wheelhouse. And it's usually a high ticket uh, or online service based business and they're usually doing about 50 to hundred thousand dollars a year they have a proven offer um, but they don't have the lead generation down they don't have a full calendars they don't have sales funnels uh, and, and that's kind of what we build for them so ideally it's like somebody who already has the offer down I don't help people create offers in businesses I pretty much help them take something that really should be more known and, and more scaled and I help them scale it do you get involved also then obviously in the like the media buying aspects, um, you know, across the board, you, yeah. you, you know, the creative as well as the building of the funnels and the, and the, and the, the actual execution and then into the media also. That's yeah. So we, uh, so I have an advertising agency where I do that for other people where I just, they're just like, Hey, I just want to get more money and I want to make more leads. And then I have my scaling with systems, which is more, Hey, will you show me how to do this? So I actually more than likely than not, I work with entrepreneurs to help create the advertising funnels, the sales funnels. And I just say, Hey, this funnel has made us about $4 million. I give them the funnel link. They can copy and paste it and they now have their own funnel. And then I say, Hey, this video sales letter has made us $4 million. We copy and paste this, this ad. And and so then they just tweak it and make it their own. So that's, that's mostly how I help people is kind of teaching people how to do it on their own. And right. then what are, what are you finding are the most common mistakes those entrepreneurs are making that you're helping them fix? Yeah, I'd say uh, the probably the biggest one is that they don't have like consistent lead generation. They don't have a way to keep their calendars full every single day. Uh, that's probably the main one that we help people. They come in and their their whole book of business is referrals, family, friends, or referrals, and they don't have real any way to generate cold leads. Which is if you're trying to scale, as I know you guys know, into the multi seven, multi eight figures, you can't rely on just this warm traffic, right? You have to essentially be tapping out to that eighty five percent, which is people that have no idea who you are. And so we essentially teach people or create those systems in order for people to do that. And I see almost nobody has, you know, our virtual assistants, our clients get a virtual assistant from us. They're $3 an hour and they already know how to send 2,000 to 3,000 cold outbound messages a day. And so even usually day two, day three, they're seeing more appointments than they did that, that whole month. And then the other thing that I see is a big thing is they don't really have a hyperscalable offer. So their back end is just like, custom work. It's just, like, oh, you want website design? We'll do website design. You want social media content creation? We'll do that. You want ads? We'll do that. You want me to walk your kids and take your dog out? I'll do that as well, right? Anything to sign the deal. Take it the and, other uh, way around. Walk the dog <laughs> oh, and right, take the right, right. Out. That's what it is. That's what it is. And Although uh, if you're offering a virtual assistant for a kid walker, you know, we'll hire you. You'll take it. You guys will take it. Yeah. And so mm. most of the time they just, um, they don't, instead of saying, here's our solution to your problem, it's really like, we'll do whatever you need in order to essentially sign your client. So that's that helping that transition for a lot of entrepreneurs also helps them scale. Yep. And where do you see, like if, if you, if you had a lot of COVID related activities uh, coming up, I mean, this is obviously a big challenge for a lot of people. So is this 
presented opportunities for you? Yeah, the cool thing is, is I'll be honest with you, Kevin. It's like my day to day really didn't change a whole lot whenever COVID happened. Like I'm pretty much, I just stay inside. I work. I think a lot of people who worked online, their their day to day didn't change a whole lot. I just didn't get to go to the gym or eat out as much. Um, but obviously, my brother has a restaurant in Florida, so I know how much this really affected people, especially people I care about. But we were blessed in the sense of like we already specialize in helping people who are really brick and mortar transition online and create e-commerce stores, create online services, subscription-based models, sales funnels, ads. Uh, and so I was honestly, you know, really, really one of the fortunate ones where our business actually picked up uh, during COVID because more people were realizing, okay, I think that no matter what, eventually something would have happened where if you were a gym and you didn't have some kind of online subscription basis or you were a restaurant and you didn't have some kind of subscription basis or you're a coach or a trainer and you're not doing that online, eventually something's going to happen in the economy where you have to do it. I think that COVID obviously shotgunned that and obviously was was disrupting for everybody here. But uh, we were already helping a lot of people make that transition. And so to be really frank with you guys, it just uh, brought us a lot more business when people saw that we could do that really well. I'm going to steal one of Kevin's favorite questions and ask you to tell us about an example of a magical transformation of a business that came to you where they were before and then where they are now based on what you did for them. Yeah, that's an awesome question. So uh, I have a good friend of mine. His name's Shane Cigar, uh, incredible guy. He runs a, a really successful advertising agency actually for the CBD industry. And he came to us in January of this year. Um, and he had done local search engine optimization for uh, clients before, and he was doing about $8,000 a month doing that. But uh, just like I had said, the two biggest issues he had was number one, he was just based on referrals and getting new clients. And number two, SEO work is very customized. It's very hard to do like, you know, um, copy and paste SEO work. And so he realized that if he did lead generation through ads, not only number one, are his clients seeing results in two to three days versus like six to 12 months, but number two, he can copy and paste the same thing across the entire industry. And uh, like I said, he was doing about $8,000 in a totally different industry in January. And I just got a, a video testimonial from him three days ago. He just hit $230,000 uh, in one month literally just happened in the month of August. Uh, this, this will be the 230K month. And he did that through the things that we taught in Scaling with Systems. But most of it literally had to do with having a packed calendars for his four sales reps every single day and then having a back-end offer that takes him about 15 minutes to set up versus the literally six to eight hours of setup and then hours of weekly maintenance in the SEO world. So, so are you out, um, are, is one of your business models we're doing a podcast right now instead of like face-to-face -face kind of get-togethers. Do you have a, your own kind of now COVID uh, policies in terms of getting new customers, sharing information? You, you're doing a lot of virtual summits. What, how's your business model changing now as opposed yeah. to the old days of pressing the flesh? Yeah, exactly. Right. It's funny we say this, the old days. It was like just right around the corner. But yeah, a few uh, weeks ago. <laughs> a few weeks ago, exactly. Um, yeah, so I had a bunch of different, we had a mastermind ourselves that was scheduled for about a 200 person mastermind ourselves that was sold out, that was scheduled for July, that now we're doing virtual. Uh, and I've been sp spoken on a bunch of virtual stages. I've seen Tony Robbins do some really cool stuff with his virtual stuff. I have a total respect to that man. I, I love what he's doing with it. Um, obviously, everyone in here has had events and masterminds. And so I will say there is something that's different about, like you said, press the flesh when you're with somebody, speaking with somebody. I, it'll be very difficult to make that up in the online world. But all of my clients, all my sales calls, all my coaching calls, uh, all of that stuff was already virtual. Uh, and now, like I said, we are hosting a mastermind in a few weeks here that will be virtual online. It'll be my first one that I host that's virtual and online, but I've probably done a dozen or so in the past few weeks. And um, with people like Payoneer, some really large companies that have done it that I think have done a really great job transitioning online. But yeah, it'll be interesting seeing, especially the industry or the world that we're in right now, how these kind of masterminds and conferences, even after everything is kind of the green light and go ahead, I think that a lot of it will be transitioning online as well. Your passion is obvious. What do you like best about what you do? Uh, I love that question. I'd probably say, and this is in all honesty, the thing I love, two things I love the most about what I do is number one, anything that I learned and scaling and helping grow my business is directly applicable to my clients. So anytime I'm investing in myself to scale, scaling with systems, I get to tell my clients, Hey, this worked and this didn't work. 
Uh, the other side of that is anytime I'm talking to a client and they're doing something that maybe we're not doing and I'm talking about growing their business, I then get to learn what's working for them and apply it to my business. So it's almost like a cheat code where I'm getting to hear what everybody is doing and seeing what's working and what's not working. Uh, and then the other side of it is a big part of our program is we give fully trained virtual assistants to our clients that we find in the Philippines. We train them and we place them. And like this morning, I got a message from another one today. And so we get to help our clients scale and grow. But at the same time, we're giving people... Um, um, jobs like meaningful year, two year, three year, five year long uh, jobs where they wouldn't have had one before or they didn't have any work because of what's going on in the world right now. So it's kind of a double win for me. I get to help somebody find long term work and I also get to help a client scale their company online. Awesome. We, we greatly appreciate your time. We know it's incredibly valuable for our listeners and our viewers who are watching and want to learn more. Where is the best place for them to go to learn more about all things Ravi and scaling with systems? Yeah. Thank you guys so much for having me on here. I had an absolute blast. Thank you everybody that lent me your ears. I hope you guys got some value out of it. If you go to any of the social media channels and you just type in my first and last name, R-A-V-I-A-B-U-V-A-L-A, -A -A, you can find me on there. Um, and if you guys want a little bit more about like filling up your calendars, where to find a virtual assistant, some of those funnels that we have, those $4 million funnels. I just want to copy and paste those. I have a totally free course. It's about eight and a half hours of content and I made it for uh, you guys. So if you go to scalingwithsystems.com slash shark, uh, you'll get access to uh, that course directly. Instant download. It's about eight and a half hours for free. Awesome. We greatly appreciate Very your good. time. Hey. hey, go ahead, Seth. Sorry. <laughs> Thanks for a fascinating interview. This has been Seth Green with Kevin Harrington and Ravi Abuvela. Ravi, good luck, man. Let's stay in touch. I appreciate it, Kevin. Thank you so much for your time. Okay. And, and Seth, I appreciate you having me on here. Thank you, guys. Thanks, buddy. Bye-bye. Take it easy, guys. Do you need money to fund your idea, product, or service? Are you ready to take your business to the next level but need capital to get it done? Kevin Harrington has heard more than 50,000 pitches and knows how to help you make the perfect pitch to get the funding for your entrepreneurial dream. He's distilled the process down in his perfect pitch cheat sheet, and it's yours for free. Just text PITCH to him right now at 727-888-2100. Text PITCH to 727-888-2100 right now and claim your free perfect pitch cheat sheet. Text PITCH to 727-888-2100 to start funding your dream today. This show has been produced by Market Domination, LLC. To discover how you can have your own show completely done for you and turn it into a real published book and become the authority in your marketplace, go to www.marketdominationllc.com slash podcast offer.